There are a number of managers who have achieved legendary status by winning multiple European Cups, including the likes of Bob Paisley, Carlo Ancelotti and Brian Clough. But there is a manager who won two European Cups that is not held in as high esteem, which is a disservice to his career. The name of this man is Ernst Happel. In a managerial career spanning 30 years, he won honours across Europe, including two European Cup titles, and is perhaps the most underappreciated manager of all time. This is a story of Ernst Happel, the greatest manager you've never heard of. Ernst Happel was born in Vienna, Austria, on the 29th of November 1925. He started his career with Rapid Vienna, joining the club as an apprentice. At the age of 13, he was banned from team meetings due to his refusal to sing along to Hitler Youth songs, as he was strongly opposed to the Führer's regime. He was arrested by the American Armed Forces when serving on the Eastern Front, but managed to jump out of a train destined for Munich, before finding his way back to Vienna. He would spend a combined 14 years playing for Rapid across two spells, winning six Austrian titles. He played 51 games for Austria, helping them achieve a third place finish at the 1954 World Cup. He retired from playing in 1959 and started his managerial career with Addo Den Haag in the Netherlands in 1962. It was clear that Happel's managerial ability was something special. In three of Happel's first four seasons at the club, they finished runners-up in the KNVB Cup. In 1968, Happel's side would finally go one better and win the cup for the first time in their history, after defeating Renus Mikkel's Ajax in the final. His work with Den Haag was gaining plaudits, and Dutch champions Feyenoord decided to appoint Happel as their new manager. Happel would set up his side in a 4-3-3 formation, basing his side around the spine of Rhinus Israel, Willem van Hannigan and Cohen Mugelin. Happel worked wonders at de Kuyp, as Feyenoord reached the European Cup final in the Austrians' first season in charge, where they faced Jockstein Celtic at the San Siro. Celtic took the lead through Tommy Gemmel, but Israel levelled two minutes later, and a late extra-time goal from Ove Kinvall won Feyenoord's a European Cup for the first ever time. The next season, Feyenoord won the Intercontinental Cup, and Happel also won his first league title that campaign, as Feyenoord captured the Eredivisie title. After two trophyless seasons, Happel left Feyenoord behind for Spain, where he took over at Seville. His spell at the Spaniards was brief, with them languishing in the Segunda division at the time. His spell only lasted a couple of months, after which he would join Club Rouge in Belgium. Happel brought in major changes at the club, revamping the squad and giving them a low salary with high winning bonuses to encourage their performances. His training was intense and physically demanding, but it brought him and the club results. Whilst his first season brought him no silverware, he didn't have to wait long. They would win the Belgium League three years in a row, and the Belgium Cup in 1977 to make it a double. They narrowly missed out on European glory when they lost the 1976 UEFA Cup final, but they had another shot at the European crown in 1978. Rouge reached the European Cup final, where they would face Liverpool. Rouge had the chance to become the first ever Belgium side to win the European Cup. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. A late Kenny Dalglish goal sealed the trophy for Liverpool, and Happel's second European crown would have to wait. Happel had also taken over the Netherlands national team alongside his role at Club Rouge in 1977. He had to do without star Johan Cruyff, who refused to travel to the World Cup after a kidnapping attempt on his family. The Dutch did not start the tournament well, but they ended up reaching their second final, where they faced hosts Argentina. Happel, renowned as a man of few words, simply said in his pre-match talk, Gentlemen, two points. Unfortunately, the Dutch would lose the final by three goals to one. Following defeats in the two biggest games of football within a matter of months, Happel stood down from his two jobs and decided to take a break from the game. He returned with Belgium's second division side Harold Becke in 1979 before joining Standard Liège. In his two years at the club, he won the Belgian Cup, before he went to West Germany to manage Hamburg. Hamburg had, under the stewardship of Branko Zebek, won the Bundesliga, and also reached the European Cup final in 1980. 
it was hoped that Happel could take them one step further. In his first season, Happel took Hamburg to the Bundesliga title, and they also reached the UEFA Cup final, but lost 4-0 on aggregate to IK Gothenburg. The next season, Hamburg retained their Bundesliga title, and had a chance at European redemption. Hamburg faced Juventus in the 1983 European Cup final in Athens. Happel had another chance to get back his European crown, and this time he was successful. An early goal from Felix Magath was enough to seal Hamburg's first ever European Cup, and made Happel the first manager to win the European Cup with two different clubs. In the celebrations, completely out of the blue, Happel was seen dancing on the touchline in joy. Hamburg goalkeeper Uli Stein remarked that seeing this was as unusual as seeing the Pope in swimwear. Happel also established the longest unbeaten run in Bundesliga history, with Hamburg going 36 games without defeat. The honours would mostly dry up for Happel and Hamburg over the next few years, but he did complete the set when they won the DFP Pokal in 1987. Having won it all in West Germany, Happel decided that he had been away from home for too long, and decided to cross the border to return to Austria. He took over at Svarovsky Tyrol, and would add three more honours to his large trophy cabinet, winning the Austrian League in 1989 and 1990, and the Austrian Cup in 1989. He is one of only four managers to win the league in four different countries. His managerial career had the perfect job as his swan song, as he took charge of the Austrian national team. However, his time in the hot seat would not be long. Happel had been described by many as a loner, but was always accompanied by cigarettes and cognac, and it would be one of these companions that would ultimately be his undoing. In 1992, Ernst Happel contracted lung cancer as a consequence of his chain smoking, and on the 14th of November 1992, Ernst Happel died from the cancer at the age of 66. Four days after his passing, Austria and Germany faced off in a nil-nil draw. Happel's cap was placed on the bench for the duration of the match. Ernst Happel deserves to be recognised as one of the game's managerial greats. His name is nowhere near as well known as it should be, and his huge list of honours puts many managers to shame. His grand total of 15 major honours across four countries is remarkable, and the two clubs he took to European Cup glory, Feyenoord and Hamburg, have not won the competition since. The man of few words became a man of many honours in his incredible career, and for what he achieved, he deserves to be recognised as one of the greats. Mm -hmm.